got here is a 10 kV thumper and it's all self-contained. It's 55 pounds, but it has a battery inside of it that's 24 volts. When it's fully charged, you're at about 26 volts of power. And so it's a lead acid battery. It's all right to go ahead and leave it plugged in. There's a little regulator there that will uh, keep it uh, fresh, I guess. Uh, but um, uh, the uh, battery itself will last about, if it's a good new battery, will last maybe an hour's worth of cycle pumping. Really, this unit's pretty simple to run, and it only takes you five minutes to usually find a fault. Usually, every circumstance is different. Uh, but um, I'm gonna kinda go over everything here. There are some safety precautions with this. Uh, there has been some hazards with it in the past where uh, people have got shocked off of it, um, just screwing around. Uh, it is 10 kV, so you want to make sure you're wearing your protective gloves when you're using it. Uh, when we're doing some uh, training like this, we'll make sure that we get the side that's popping uh, away from us. Uh, and so if you want to go ahead and put it on a blanket when you're out there in the field, that helps as well. Anything to help insulate yourself uh, from the conductor. So uh, the unit does three tests. It will give you a footage to the fault, which is HG, HD TDR, HV TDR, sorry, it's cold out here. And then cycle thump mode is your second one. Um, that will give you a thump at the fault, so you can go listen for it. And then high pot mode. High pot mode you can use to see if the cable's good or bad. See if it will hold all 10,000 volts or not. And so you can kind of skip that mode if you wanted to, but if you're unsure if that's a bad cable or not, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and hook up your leads and turn, up, uh, turn on high pot mode and see if it holds all 10 kV. The way we got this hooked up out here, there's 30 foot of cable wound up in here, but the way we got it hooked up is, um, as you can see, the green is to ground, black is to the neutral, and red is high. And on this one here, we're just putting the neutral and, and, the, and the ground together because we're just uh, um, <clears throat> using the spool of wire, wire as an example. But if you're hooking up inside of a transformer, you would probably uh, put your probe in and hook up to the probe with your red lead, hook up to the neutral, and then hook the ground up to uh, usually the ground rod that's in there, our separate ground rod off to the side. And the ground is only used, there is no energy really going down the ground side, it's just used to disperse off any energy that's left in the machine. So when you hit stop ground, it has somewhere to go. So make sure you get that hooked up. Now when you go to stop your whole test, you wanna make sure that you stop ground it, you turn the unit off, and then I usually will clip all three of those together after I know everything's off, clip them together before I start to wind everything up. And once it's wound back up in here, you can go ahead and clip it on this bar here so they're all clipped together as well. There is a little safety precaution right here. If you forget to turn the unit off, it will push up against that button right there and turn the unit off. And so there's a lot of little safety things on this unit, including um, some extra venting holes to vent out any battery gases that are inside there and then also a return to zero voltage that means you can't start any test unless you always return the output back to zero if you have the output up to 10 or 5 or whatever and you hit HV start to start any test it's not going to do anything and so you always want to go back to down to zero now who wants to run this who wants to go through the buttons and when you turn the machine on it does a little self test it goes through um, and tells you what kind of what mode you're in and <clears throat> he's on cycle right now. Yep, so the left knob there controls what test you're going to use it on. Um, and let's go ahead and high pot this first. Go ahead and switch that to high pot mode. Do you to the have right. to turn the machine off before you can switch no, modes? You, no, you don't. Okay. No. So it's a good idea to always have this at zero, though. If you don't have this at zero, it will ground itself out when you move modes, but you want to stop ground and always go back to zero whenever you're done with anything. So he's on high pot mode right now. Okay. What we see on the screen here is your output voltage up on the top left hand corner, your battery voltage up on the top right hand corner, your footage to the fault in bottom left hand corner, what type of fault it is, it will say OP for open or SH for short. It should always say SH whenever you're faulting uh, out a cable with this machine. It should short to itself. If it comes back and says RF, that means a resistant fault. That means you're going to have some strange readings. That happens when your concentric is corroded away and just too far away that it can't arc to itself. So when you may thump it two or three times and come up with a different footage each time. And so be aware, go to the other end and maybe shoot it that way and you'll get a better reading. 
And then you have uh, your velocity of propagation reading. That means the speed of light percentage. So every cable has a different speed to it. And we don't have to adjust that yet right now. Most cables that you're going to be on is 54, 55%. We can go ahead and adjust that after we've already thumped the cable. Um, so either way, you want to have that pretty close to what it should be at to get an accurate footage. If you're not going a long section, you know, if you're only shooting a couple hundred foot, as long as you're within a percent, it, you're going to be pretty close to it, enough, close enough to be able to hear it when you're out there. But for the most part, when you're high potting it, none of that really matters. Just your output voltage matters. So go ahead and hit HV start. The red button, let, red light will come up, letting you know that's a hot cable now. And now we'll go ahead and turn up the output. And as we're turning up the output, we'll watch our output voltage up on the top left-hand corner. He's got two kilovolts, three kilovolts, four kilovolts. Eventually, you'll see it just all of a sudden break down. He's got six, and now he's got four. See, it now it's back down to three. So it so just keep all turning sudden, it up till it breaks till over. Till it goes down, and then you go ahead and turn it back down. So it's breaking down about seven kilovolts right now. So we know it's a bad cable. And we're and now that when we go to our other tests, like cycle thump or high voltage TDR, we're going to need more than seven kilovolts to be able to have it show up. So we're going to want to probably use at least nine. So we'll go ahead, and we know it's a bad cable. Go ahead and switch modes here. You can go ahead and hit stop ground, but go ahead and switch modes and see what happens. What if it's a good cable? Is it going to keep oh, going hear, up and up? Yeah, you do you hear that? Do you, yeah, when it, when it did that, it kind of stopped grounded for you. So if you forgot, it did it for you. But I always get in the habit of pushing that anyways. What were you asking? If it's a good cable, is it going to keep going up and up? Yeah, it will hold, hold it and charge. just stay there. And then if it does that, you want to make sure you hit stop ground to see it discharge. Right. And now we're at zero kilovolts, so we know there's no charge on the cable anymore. So we're going to go ahead and try to find a footage to the fault now. And so he went to high voltage TDR, and now we'll go ahead and hit HV start, and we'll go ahead and go up to 10 kV. We're just going to go ahead and use it on 10 kV because it broke down at 8, and we need at least 1 or 2 kilovolts more in order to get it to show up uh, when we do the other tests. And so you can see the capacitance is built up. We have 10 kV showing there on the screen, and we want to go ahead and thump it and let it go. Go ahead and hit the thump button and you'll get your footage to come up there on the screen. And it's saying 949 foot to That's the fault. Short. It's shorting out. See it says SH. That means we got a good thump to it. Our footage should be pretty correct. But we need to take it a little step further, and that's to adjust the velocity of that cable. Every cable has a different speed to it. And so that's what this VP means. That's velocity of propagation. What that means is the percentage of the speed of light. Right now it's set to 55% the speed of light. This cable is a lot faster than that because it's a smaller cable. You know, the energy is going to travel through it a lot quicker. In the manual, you'll have a whole list of VP ratings. So all you got to do is look up the cable that type that you're on and adjust this to whatever it should be by using those buttons right there. Go ahead and hit that down and move it to 54, and you'll see what happens. We're at 949 foot right now. Keep going until you get to 540. And now we are at 932 feet. So it wasn't that much of a difference, but you know it will make a difference if you're the one out there trying to hear that fault when you go to cycle thump mode. So you want to try to get as close to that fault as possible too. So somewhere we have a chart that says this size cable should be this. should be at this. Yep. You should write it. Yeah, down you normally are always you're always yeah. on the same two or three cables. So if you just figure those out and just write them over to the right here, that's what most people do. Or they laminate it like this and it's in there, but we don't have it in this machine for some reason. But anyway, um, if you forget how to do that, if you forget to do that, it's not a big deal. It's still going to get you close, especially if your fault's only 100 or 200 foot away. You're going to get pretty close as long as you're staying around 54 or 55%. That's normally where your cables are going to be at. So um, now that we found the footage to the fault, we are going to have somebody walk out there and listen for the cycle thumping. So go ahead and switch it over to cycle thump mode. I don't have to wind anything down. You don't. You can go ahead and hit stop ground. Go ahead and get used to that. Stop ground. You can see it's at zero. Go ahead and return it back to zero. There we go. Yep. You hear how it clicked when you, yeah. when you uh, went to cycle thump. Go ahead and hit HV start now. Again, if I'm going to hit stop ground real quick. I want to show you something. See, if he had this up to 2 or whatever, if he hit stop ground now, it's not going to do nothing. So you just can return it to 0, hit stop, or start. Red light comes on. You know it, it, it's live. Go ahead and turn it up. 
and normally we, we'll go ahead and just turn it to 10 kV because that will give you a good pop and then when that capacitance builds up and matches that 10 kV reading you can hear it popping back there so there it goes again and it should pop there you go so it takes about four seconds to get up to 10 kV and you guys know it's a lot louder when you get out there in the field. This is nothing compared to how it's going to be on an actual primary cable. This is just a small test cable here, so it's... it's every, every primary that we've had them hooked up to, I've had a hell of a time trying to hear them. And it depends on the depth, and it depends on what type of fault it is, too. Sometimes so if it's shooting to ground, you know, instead of because the concentric's too far away and it's not arcing to itself, it won't give you a good pop. And of course, if it's beyond five, six foot deep, or it's got it's frost, conduit, it's hard to hear too. Yeah. Yep, it just echoes down the conduit if it's in conduit. Yeah. So you can go ahead and hit stop ground anytime. But that's your cycle thump mode. And if you had a listening device to go with it, that helps a lot. You know, if you can, yeah, some of the listening devices have a magnetics field um, level on it. So if you go to the magnetics um, part of the listening device, it will basically sense that going off and take you the right direction so you don't actually have to use your ears. That helps a lot when you're in a noisy environment with the interceptor. The low voltage TDR mode on this will basically just put a 12 volt reading down that cable. It doesn't use any of the high voltage stuff at all. It just takes a quick shot and lets you know how far away it sees a fault. Now normally that that will uh, <clears throat> not see the actual fault itself, it will see the other end of the cable. And that's kind of a nice tool though, because you're able to determine how far away that fault is from, from the other end. And so if it comes back and says 800 foot, and your, your fault comes up at 750 foot, you know you're only 50 foot from the other end, you probably want to hook this up there and shoot it because you'll get a lot more accurate, and you'll get a stronger cycle pump if you do that as well. This will shoot up to a mile's worth of cable, but you know, the further you are, the less accurate you're going to be on your footages, and you're going to lose energy too for the pumping set. You have some other things up here, like for an external battery hookup, and you also have a data port for uh, um, it, it will actually stores the waveform inside the unit, and you can look at the actual waveform. They have some software you can look at it and, and see what it looks like. If you've ever seen a big thumper truck. They have to move the cursor to where the, the wave is happening. You know, where it shorts out, it should go down. The wave goes mm -hmm. down and then move the cursor to the leading edge of that. But you don't have to do that with this one. You just hit thump and it interprets it for you and it gives straight footage to the fault. Then you go to cycle thump and you go listen for it at that footage.